Hello everyone, my name is Konrad Mateja. I'm from Wrocław University of Technology, and I will tell you a few words about larvae which we thought are able to eat polystyrene. So nowadays we have a huge problem with polystyrene waste. PS is used as a material for isolation boards and different types of packaging. It's hardly degradable and it is resistant to photo oxidation. And therefore, we are looking for efficient and environmental friendly technologies to recycle PS waste. A few years ago, some papers were released uh, about larvae of Tenebria molitor, mealworm, which uh, were, a were able to eat polystyrene. And uh, that was really amazing because larvae were able to survive up to one month eating only PS and they were able to conduct the polymerization of PS. Uh, we, know, we knew that almost 48% uh, of PS carbon is transferred into CO2 as a product of metabolism. Almost 50% of PS carbon is removed from the organism as a feces and almost, uh, uh, almost nothing like 0.5% is incorporated into a biomass. We knew also that probably some uh, good microbes are responsible for PS biodegradation. And therefore we ask a question, if we are able to use larva as an efficient, efficient technology to utilize PS wastes. So we, we basically wanted to know what is going on with larva. So why they, survive? Are they uh, using PS as a source of energy? And can some PS metabolites can act toxic? Uh, <clears throat> we decide to use that model to get answers, uh, at least for some of these questions. And uh, we had to build a model which would nicely describe the larval, larval stage of the Nebrio molitor. So we started with the standard depth model and go through its assumptions. Three most, in, most, uh, most important assumptions are over here. The density of uh, larva does not change during the growth and uh, it is consistent with the concept of strong and uh, weak homeostasis. Furthermore, we assume that the larvae are isomorphs and it was confir confirmed by the typical shape of the growth curve. And therefore we were able to calculate the volume and the volumetric length from physical length using shape coefficient. And the physical length was a larva perimeter obtained from pictures. And the uh, uh, volume and then volumetric length was measured with the high accuracy using pycnometer and uh, Archimedes principle. From the depth model for holometabolous insect, we, kno we knew that uh, maturity of larva does not change and the larva is an adult in a depth uh, context. The reproduction buffer is accumulated in the larval phase and when it exceeds a critical value, the pupation occurs and uh, the reproduction buffer uh, cannot be returned to reserves and used as a, to sustain life and growth. And the uh, reproduction buffer would be used in, a, uh, in further, further life stages of the Nebre monitor. Okay, uh, we decide to use uh, also some um, concepts and assumptions from the simplified depth model. And some of them were dedicated to juveniles and embryos and not for adults. So we, we do not deal with them. And, but the cost of uh, making an egg, egg is constant. And we assume that the number of egg, eggs produced uh, in the future is also constant. And therefore, there is also some constant value of reproduction buffer, which is a trigger for pupation. So when this value is reached, the pupation occurs. And uh, reproduction rate can be scaled by this value. So when R is, is equal to one, one, uh, the pupation uh, occurs. This is basic, basically the, the reason we scale it. And if we have a large group uh, of larvae, we can estimate the time of pupation. 
time of depletion, which should be normally distributed in the population, as you see, as you see over over here, over here. We also made some additional assumptions. And first uh, is that the volume of an organism uh, is a sum. This is a sum of the volume of structure and volume of reserves. So structures and reserves are separated in space. And uh, according to weak and strong homeostasis, when organisms uh, grow, uh, grow uh, the increase in structure, structural volume is proportional to the increase in reserves volume. Uh, and the UV is a uh, conversion factor from structure, structural to volumetric length. Uh, however, during starvation, the organisms use reserves. They are preferred. And the decrease of larva volume are proportional to decrease of reserves volume. So uh, after reserves are used to uh, are used, the remaining volume is structural volume, as you see over here. And uh, this equation can be used to estimate energy conductance, which is really important. Uh, so in the end, we obtain uh, these sets of equations, which are used when the uh, growth is observed and uh, in the case of starvation. Okay, let's go to the experiment. So we prepared seven groups of larvae, each with different feeding condition, uh, 50 specimens in each group. group. The control group was fed at libitum with oats. Some groups were not fed at all, just starvation groups. Some were fed with uh, polystyrene as a sole source of food. And some of them were fed with polystyrene with some additives, the, for example, minerals and vitamins. We took pictures of each of these group of larvae every two days. So we've got a lot of data. And here are some results. As you see, the PS waste uh, mass decrease during the experiment. And uh, so larva basically ate polystyrene chips. And most of survived, uh, most of them, most of larva survived during the first uh, month like it was shown also in earlier papers. However, the fraction of survived organisms sharply decreased, decreased after this period, as you see over here. And okay, here we have the changes in volumetric length and it, uh, it was growing, uh, larvae were growing uh, in the control group and in groups fed with uh, PS with some additives and with some supplements, let's say, uh, it decreased in starvation groups and uh, in uh, groups fed with PS only over here, over here. And the pupation was observed in the control group. Uh, group. Uh, only a few pupas were found in the groups fed with uh, PS and oats and minerals uh, and vitamins. So this, this these groups. And so let's look now at the parameter value, values. Uh, the growth rate, RB, uh, was highest in the control group. And basically the, the value of RB decreased in the other groups, as you see over here. The same concerns the maximum volumetric length. And obviously the reproduction rate, this is not a parameter, this is a rate, uh, the reproduction rate decreased as the value of F and value of E, reserve density, also decreased. So uh, now we want to deduce uh, what is the reason behind this observation. And here we have some options and we will try to eliminate some of them. Uh, red are options re related to toxicity and yellow are options uh, which are related to starvation. 
Okay, so we are pretty sure that F value decreased because we made it decreased. However, uh, it does not explain the uh, decrease in RB value. So probably something else is also going on over there. And we can eliminate mechanism uh, which concern egg production because we, not, we do not deal with them during the larval stage. And okay, so these two one, these two. Uh, we can eliminate the decrease of structures shrinking as we assume the decrease in volume is caused by the decrease of reserve, reserves. We do not observe any faster egg production or faster pupation. Uh, we assume that uh, structure composition is uh, not affected, only uh, 0.5% of PS carbon can be found in the body tissues. And we can uh, eliminate the increase in somatic maintenance because it would additionally increase RB value, RB value over here. So uh, most probable, probable is that Tenebrio uh, monitor larvae change metabolism as a reaction to the insufficient food supply. These two options are most probable. Uh, okay, so, uh, so the main conclusions are that the development of uh, Tenebrio monitor larvae uh, strongly depends on research dyna dynamics and probably the transition to the next stage of development is in, in conditions um, um, in which uh, uh, with an insufficient food supply strongly depends on the previously accumulated reserves and structures. And uh, the PS or possible products of its degradation are uh, probably not toxic uh, in the tested condition concentration. And the uh, PS or possible products of uh, its degradation are non or insufficient source, insufficient source of mass and energy for larvae. And therefore, so it raises some doubts about the use of millwards as an effective technology for utilizing PS polystyrene. So thank you very much. Here is a contact for me and I'm waiting for some questions. Thank you.